Now, a lot of people don't know that Labyrinth have zero turn plays. That means you're playing on your opponent's turn on their first turn before you even have a turn, and you could even win the duel by playing your Labyrinth deck on turn zero. Let's see how we do that exactly. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. All right, setting this up. He's going to be, oh, okay, well, uh, that wasn't a very good turn from him, but he did set his call by the grave, so that's good. He's not gonna be wasting us out. This is just to showcase how we can make plays on their turn. Now, we are discarding the clock on chain link one, then you chain link to the chandelier. That way, while the clock is in the graveyard and you activate to just discard for chandelier, the clock sees that, and then it's gonna trigger to come back to the hand. If you discard clock for the chandelier, it does not activate to summon onto the field or go back to the hand. So it's very important to know that difference. Let's play this out. So it's important to know that you wanna do this on your opponent's turn, normally to disrupt a play or during their end phase. So the clock will either be going back to the hand or onto the field, and we're gonna big welcome Labyrinth, summoning from the deck, and ideally you do have a lady on the field chaining to the big welcome Labyrinth. This is where the opponent, if they have any quick play card, maxi, anything, you chain it to their trap to chain link block the lady from setting up a trap. If they're not gonna be chain link blocking your lady, you're gonna easily be winning the duel as you continually set up new traps from the deck. That's any trap. Okay, he's got something actually. He's got Havnis. Havnis summoning. He is going to be milling a Kashtira tier limit, so that will be triggering. I'm going to be setting up a dimensional barrier to stop up the fusion plays. Now, the big welcome is resolving, summoning the lovely, return back the clock, but the dimensional barrier, which turns off fusion summoning and fusion effects, is not active yet until we. Well, actually, it is because we already used the clock, so we could use it whenever. If he attempts to fusion summon, we flip it up, the fusion will not happen. This is mill five right here. Also uh, playing the Romarin Sailor, that's kind of weird. We're gonna be chaining the lovely Labyrinth. Now what we could do here is we could destroy the Scream, stopping it from milling three, or we could pop a card in the hand, or we could pop that back row. Chandelier adding back to the hand because a trap made a monster leave the field, which was the big welcome returning our own monster back to the hand. Lovely taking out the Scream. Now he'll search for a trap, but it's the end phase. So he's gonna be searching during the end phase. He cannot set it and he's only gonna get the small mill with the tier limit cash Tira. <laughs> Just like that, that is what a turn zero win against tier limit looks like. Now, while it looked like they had nothing, they did have Scream, they did have Havness, they're potentially mill and five, but that's what you could do with Labyrinth on the very first turn on the opponent's turn. As you can see here, Max C, Ash, Ash, Nibiru. How do we play through that? Now, I do have Plunder in my hand in this deck, but that's not the deck that's gonna be showing you. This is gonna be mostly Labyrinth plays. I hope so, unless I'm forgetting. Let's see what I do here. We're gonna be summoning our Ariana. Now, I think this is a very bad Ash target. You should usually be saving Ash for the big welcome Labyrinth, but that's fine with me. Thank you for Ash and the Ariana. And we're gonna be chain summoning the Lady onto the field. And then he's got that Max C to draw one off of it. Now, we're definitely not gonna be meeting the Nibiru threshold here. So actually, I countered Max C. I activated a special summon and he chained Max C and I said, you know what? I'm gonna change my mind. I'm not special summoning. I'm gonna send my Lady Labyrinth to the graveyard so you don't even get to draw. So we're not only countering Ash in this replay, we're also gonna counter Max C. So chain discard, set up the big Welcome Labyrinth and then we have the Welcome Labyrinth. This is a very good setup. Did not need the Lady on the field to give them a draw. Now, how do we counter that Ash? A lot of people would be using Big Welcome, then chaining the Welcome Labyrinth to it, but the main use of Ash is on the Big Welcome. So I encourage you all to counter the Ash specifically by using the Welcome Labyrinth first. So I'm gonna be saving it for when I have a disruption play here. Now I'm using Welcome Labyrinth. So he knows that if he Ashes the Welcome Labyrinth, it's weak, it's garbage, right? If I then follow up a big welcome, that's lovely. Return Ariana, pop a card in the field. That's what you really want to Ash. That's why he's gonna save it. But what happens if you save it? You lose. Because most Labyrinth players would not summon lovely here. They would instead get greedy. They would summon a Lady Labyrinth. Why? Because Lady Labyrinth will change the big welcome, setting up an eradicator, setting up a dimensional barrier but that's greedy. If you instead summon Lovely off the Welcome Labyrinth, which is not expected, Lovely has a secret effect which states, your opponent cannot chain 
to your normal traps. So now it's illegal to ash my big welcome, and you lost your last opportunity to use the ash. And a good way to do this also is if you activate the welcome labyrinth and their field turns red, that is in a way I would say that is legal cheating, seeing that they have a delay, a response to your welcome labyrinth. That's something activatable. If you activate the welcome labyrinth and their field doesn't light up at all, there's no delay whatsoever, then you could change your mind, you could change your play, you could summon the lady instead, and then go for the big play where you big welcome, chain lady, get the clock, add the clock back to the hand, and then you could set up a dimensional barrier. But we felt that delay, so I changed my mind, we summoned the lovely instead, and you see that dead ash is no good. We're gonna be summoning our lady, return the lady, activate the lovely, get poppin', Ariana is also gonna be triggering because we returned a monster on the field back to the hand. Stovey is gonna be summoning. We're gonna draw a card, special summon the Lady Labyrinth onto the field, 3,000 attack, not being summoned in defense. Ariana will summon it into attack. And just like that, with Ash scooping against Labyrinth where it's supposed to beat the deck. All right, we are playing against Kashtira. Now this is a weird Kashtira deck, but they're still gonna get a Rise Heart out. So let's see what's good. I am not going to Gamma. I'm going to be saving the Gamma for the Arise Heart, so you will be seeing that. What's really great about the Gamma against a deck like Kashtira is the Arise Heart is a mandatory activation if anything gets banished. So it's going to be perfect, very easily to trigger it, and then we're going to get popping. And ideally, by triggering it on our turn, we get that level 8 synchro. So that's what we want to do here. Every card sent to the graveyard's expansion said, so we can't even attempt to activate the Stovey as it states, the cost is the card must go to the graveyard in order to activate. So let's play around that. Come to me. We got this hand. Now, I don't have a way to trigger the Arise, so that's a big problem here. So I don't get that free pop into going to a level eight synchro. But if you have even anything like, let's say an upstart goblin, which no one plays, but any spell card that activates the search a card or something like that, it will get banished. And then that will trigger the Arise to use the Gamma. So we're gonna be holding on to this. We're gonna be doing the best we can. I'm gonna be leaving the Ariana off the field and he's gonna get greedy. He's gonna get banished in during the end phase. And now we're gonna be whipping out the Gamma. Of course he's gonna be banished under the end phase. Why would you not? So pop it up, we lose that free level eight synchro, but let's see how we could play beyond this turn. He's got a sphere mode for some reason, ledger of the ledger man, and he's got toll hike. I don't even know what kind of deck we're playing against here. We're gonna be welcome labyrinth thing into the Ariana, add to the hand. So this is where I felt that we could be playing right into an ash for a bigger play here add the lady, then I could summon the lady, and then I could chain the lady to the big welcome labyrinth. Now he's gonna banish a card from the extra deck. We do not really care here, that's fine. Focus on the plays. Goodbye to my goddess. Now, big welcome labyrinth. He screws up by not flipping up the toll hike. You want to flip up anything, activate anything in response to the trap of the lady on the field. Now, continuous traps, lady cannot chain to the continuous trap, only to a normal trap. So big screw up from them. We don't have clock, so what do we do? We summon the clock, we add the clock, we now have dimensional barrier, which will be activatable once we return the clock back to the hand. Now Unicorn's gonna get search in, that is perfectly fine here, and we're gonna disallow the ability to summon an exceed, or we're just going to be stopping the exceed. Now, by activating these monster effects of the Fenrir on the field, he's gonna think maybe that he could banish the lady, but the lady cannot be banished because she is untargetable. Discard the Ariana. Does he do so? Does he fall for the bait? Does he get debated? Set up the big welcome for the deck. He does get debated, trying to banish the lady, banishing the Ariana instead. We're gonna flip up Dimensional Barrier early so he does not go into the Shang-Ri. Because if he has a Shang-Ri on the field, summons a Rise Heart, then he could banish the Big Bang. He could then grab a material from the Shang-Ri all under the Dimensional Barrier. We do not want that to happen. Also, even activating the Shang-Ri while you have the field spell, it will still trigger the field spell to pop a card even with Dimensional Barrier on the field. So just disallowing it completely is the way. Ladies protected, Fenbeer is gonna be grabbing a unicorn, get that additional summon, but look how large the lady is. Lady's got a big D, 2,900. You're not getting over that. Even with the field spell boost, generally, unless they have Ogre. Now, let's see what we could do here. We're gonna be Pot of E, Banish, draw two, to battle we go while we are untargetable. Now, I have no idea what the heck this is. Toll Hike, each player must send a card from their hand to the graveyard to declare an attack. What? Okay, fine. 
We want to take out the Fenrir before it can be activatable from a monster effect here. Now within the battle phase, chain the lady to the big welcome. We're going to be summoning from the deck, first setting up a Terrors of the Overroot, a really good card to be setting from your deck here, just generally being able to out anything. That will also be triggering the Welcome Labyrinth and the Graveyard to set itself onto the field. Stovey is going to be summoning itself onto the field. And then we have big main phase two plays here. We have the Clock being sent to the Graveyard to make the newly set Terrors, the Overroot, activatable. Now Lady's resummoning onto the field into defense, and we still have the attack of Lady Labyrinth on the field. So get ready. We're going to make, be making some plays. Stovey, set it up. Now, I did not attack again because the, the Toll Hike. What the heck is this? I have to send a card to declare an attack. So we're going to be making a Chaos Angel, because we have to stop this nonsense. Chaos Angel, we're going to start banishing their Unicorn, and he could resummon it with a Birth. Now, we do have a Call by the Grave on to the Fen Rear, which I'm definitely going to be using my Call by the Grave on when he activates the Birth, which does not target. We're going to be chaining Terrors of the Overroot. Actually, instead, we're going to set the Fen Rear onto the field by sending the Birth, using it on the activation of the effect, not the activation of the card. The birth, if you activate multiple copies of the card, that's fine. But you can only use the effect once. So waiting for the effect of the card, not the activation of the card, that's the important distinction there. Understand that. We're going to be setting it and also setting up an impermanence onto the toll hike so we can negate the toll hike so I can declare attacks during the next turn here. What the heck is going on? I don't even know what extra net is. Go wing dragon of spear mode. Okay. Birth, he already used the effect, so we got stopped there. We're gonna big welcome Labyrinth, spin back the Unicorn, trigger in the Torby, summoning onto the field. Now we have three bodies on the field so we can summon the Winged Dragon Aral, right? End phase. We're gonna welcome Labyrinth now. This replay is not valid unless I think I'm gonna summon all three Chaos Angels. I'm playing three. Do I do it? No, that's another replay. Oh no, I spoiled another replay. We're gonna send to the Graver to make a Muckraker. Now, why is this a crazy play? Because the Chaos Angel states that on summon, banish a card in the field, not on synchro summon. Most cards say, state on exceed summon, on fusion summon, on synchro summon, but this is gonna be on special summon. So we're gonna special summon it with the Muckraker, and then that's gonna be banishing any card on the field. So do make this play, get your Chaos Angel out. Even within the same turn, you could summon, banish, send to the grave, Muckraker, resummon, banish two cards in one turn. Goodbye to the Toll Hike, which we had in Perm for if there was a body on the field that we could have attacked into. Spin back that Fen Rear, and then we just over advantage them against a wild version of Cash Tira. All right, let's go. Let's set this up. A good in Perm, that's fine. We're gonna be Chandelier Discard in the Max C because I don't need it. Now I'm playing Psalm Strike here because Psalm Strike's main use is gonna be to stop the Ash. What counters our deck? Ash is the main counter. We're going to be Welcome Labyrinth things, summoning Our Lady onto the field. And you see, if you did not have the Psalm Strike, the safer play would be to summon Lovely and then make it so they can't use the Ash onto the Big Welcome. But if you have Psalm Strike, you don't have to worry about Ash whatsoever, and you can go for the big play. Going for Lady into Big Welcome, setting up a Dimensional Barrier or a Daruma or the Terrors of the Overroot, and it's going to be activatable the turn it is set. So we're going to be summoning our Clock, return the Clock back. This will be activatable as soon as we discard the clock. Ariana activating because a monster left the field through to a trap. We're going to draw a card. We could set that card or special summon that card. Chandelier also adding back to the hands. So we could discard the newly drawn card. Just so much is happening. Get that draw. I'm going to actually set it because <laughs> that's probably the card I would have set with the effect of Chandelier. That's fine. You're going to be searching for the unicorn. We have Dimensional Barrier to completely shut him down. I'm actually going to Solemn Strike that fool. Negate and destroy the hard once per turn effect to search for the birth. He's got Theosis, which you could use onto the Scare Claw Cash Tira. That is fine. Activate Theosis, some for the deck. We have Rise Heart. Rise Heart banishing from the deck a Theosis, triggering Theosis to add back the unicorn. And now we're going to Dimensional Barrier, locking him out of making Shang Ri or Big Eye. Now, this is wild. Ascended Thunder, 3100 attack with a field spell just out of nowhere, summoning as a beat stick. I did not expect that. All right, let's set this up. We're going to Chandelier discard the Imperm, setting up a Welcome Labyrinth, which will be triggering the clock to summon itself onto the field, using the big Welcome to return the clock back to that hand to summon the Lovely, Lovely pop a card on the fields or in the hand, and then triggering the Welcome Labyrinth and the Chandelier to add back to the hand. Wild stuff. Imperm is going to negate. 
That's fine. We don't get to pop. We're going to be using the clock, so we could use the Welcome Labyrinth that we newly set on the field as soon as it resolves. So on a separate chain, we'll be able to flip it up. Set up. We don't get that free prop pop, but we essentially pop the Imperm by forcing the activation. Ariana on summon, grabbing the Torby. Now we're going to be recycling Torby and Chandelier. Anytime the big welcome is going to spin a card in the field back to the hand, whether it's their card or our card, they're both going to get triggering. Now, Chaos Angel, come forth and summon, on summon, banish a card on the field. Battle we go. And then we're going to be setting up the triple Chaos Angel play, either this turn or next turn. I think it's next turn, possibly. Muckraker, as I said, Recycle your cards in the graveyard. Recycling Lovely, which was negated by Impermanence, so I could reset a trap from the graveyard. You could have also summoned the Chaos Angel, but Lovely would be a lot better here. So while negated, reset up, and that is recycling as we set from the deck a dimensional barrier every turn. Recycle D barrier against a fusion deck, synchro deck, or an Xyz deck, you're gonna win. A lot of TCG players said they don't wanna play purely in TCG because of Labyrinth players playing Dimensional Barrier and being able to loop it. It completely shuts them down. And the top two decks being purely in Cash Tira, the D Barrier locks them out of Xyz. Let's go. Battle we go. Now, what's crazy about the Muckraker is she has another effect. If any of your monsters would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you could tribute herself or another card in the field to protect it. All right, we're gonna be spinning back the Rise Heart, and we're also gonna be activating our Welcome Labyrinth. Now, by chaining the Welcome Labyrinth to the spin back, I can now use Ariana's effect of when a monster leaves the field through a trap, I could draw a card instead of searching if I maybe wanna draw into something non-specific. Trigger the Lovely, pop a card in the hand or on the field, Torby summon itself onto the field, Chandelier add back to the hand, and the Welcome Labyrinth also being triggered. We're gonna be searching for the big welcome here. So we didn't use the effect of just randomly drawing a card. Goodbye to the Unicorn, which is a very good pop here. Resummoning the Rise Heart. Now, it's time to flex on the opponent. Grab the Scareclaw Cash Terror. You can't exceed, because I do have Dimensional Barrier. Okay, I'm going to be looping it every single turn. Now, get ready. This is Triple Chaos Angel. Recycling the Dimensional Barrier for the third time. Muckraker, Chaos Angel number one. We've just begun. Chaos Angel Banish. Chaos Angel number two. Not hard once return. On summon, activate, banish. Big welcome labyrinth. How do we get the other Chaos Angel in the field? Well, Torby will trigger if a monster in the field leaves due to a trap. That it has left due to a trap. Torby and the Graybird will be activating. Lovely will be popping a card in the field. We're gonna pop a card in the hand, actually. We're gonna leave him with zero cards in the hand. Zero cards in the field. Triple Chaos Angel. This is the way. Add back to the hand, summon onto the field. Let's set this up, pop that up. I'm bullying Cash Tear with the deck. Yes, yeah, so we are recycling D Barrier. Triple Chaos Angel, banishing the field spell. Shout out to Rising Force for staying in the duel this long and allowing me to do this. Triple Chaos Angel, fool. Oh boy. Now, you want more turn zero plays? Let's clap up the opponent on turn zero. Ignore the plunder. I will have another plunder video with Plunder Labyrinth. I've been enjoying that deck immensely. Come forth and summon, that is fine. How do you know when you have a turn zero play? Well, just Clock and Torby or Chandelier. That's turn zero, that's it. you will be Ash negating Ecclesia, Ash negating Pot of D, Ecclesia, or the Sword Soul Emergence is gonna be the three main things that you wanna be negating. Monk of Tenyi, that is fine. Ashuna gets summoning. I'm thinking I'm waiting with the effect for the most opportune time to get poppin'. If he's going to be summoning a level eight synchro, I'm gonna pop it. If he's gonna be summoning a level 10 synchro, I'm gonna be popping. So I'm waiting. Waiting for the most opportune moment. They have no idea that I am playing Labyrinth. Now they're gonna know. That Long Yon is now going to be making me use my clock, chain link one. Torby, chain link two. Again, do not discard the clock with the Torby or the chandelier. And then the lady is extra. You do not need the lady. That's fine. Max, see me up. It's actually not kind of fine because now you get to draw two because I do want to summon a monster from the deck. But still, this is going to be worth it. Their normal summons have been used up. Their hard once return long guns have been used up. So we are fine to get using. 
We're gonna summon the clock. I'm gonna be activating the big welcome. Because we're under max C, I'm not using the clock to summon itself onto the field. I'm gonna add the clock back to my hand instead. Normally you summon the clock, return the clock, but max C changed up everything. Come forth and summon. And I will say that I got a little impatient with the lady. I should have waited for the clock to activate, then he chains Max C, then I chain Lady to the Max C. Thus, he'd only draw one card, so there was a way to optimize this turn a little bit better. Now, the Welcome Labyrinth is not activatable, but it's activatable next turn here. Return back the Lady, activate Lovely, and then it's gonna be triggering to pop a card. Again, this is turn zero plays, take out the token, and he's got an Imperm, so let's see if we can play around the Impermanence. Lovely. Recycle back the big welcome. We're going to be negated on that. We're going to chain summon the Lady Labyrinth, which we could use with the Welcome Labyrinth. Now, if we want to be crazy, we would do so in the battle phase to play around an Effect Veiler. Now, what am I doing here? This is negated, right? What a fool. What a misplay. Incorrect. This is the correct play. While it's negated, if I could chain Lady to the Welcome Labyrinth, we could set up big plays. Lady chain. But he negates. So, whatever. We eat up an Effect Veiler. That's fine. We're going to set up the clock. And I'm actually going to dodge the Veiler. <laughs> big Welcome, spin back the Lady, dodge the Veiler, set a trap with our negated Welcome Labyrinth. And what are we setting up? a Daruma that's activatable. Now, oh, this is a great ruling, okay? So if the Lovely is, let's say you chain link, you activate the Lovely, and then you chain a card to make Lovely leave the field, she's still negated. That's what happens. But if you activate Lovely, then you chain flip her down, the act of flipping her down erases her being negated. Leaving the field, she's still negated. Flipped face down, she's not negated. So we're gonna trigger her effect. Activate and get flipping, mate. Flip her down, wiping away the impermanence negate. Flip, flip, and we get popping. <laughs> Pop the long yun with the effect of the lovely that was not negated. Holy moly. And flip her right back up. I did already use her effect to try to add a trap from the graveyard back to the hand. I mean, look at this. This is just absolutely a slaughter. This is not even fair. 2900. Let's see what you do here and I'm just gonna be popping that card, whatever it is. Return back, trigger the lovely, pop a card in the hand or on the field. Ariana's gonna be triggering, Welcome Labyrinth's gonna be triggering, Torby's gonna be triggering, Chandelier's gonna be triggering, Chain Link 6, Chain Link 7, Chain Link 8, mate! Labyrinth. What the heck is this, Tear? Tear Copium, huh? Ariana changed to the Hovness. We got Max C for that. That's fine with me. What did you mill off the top of the deck here? You're limited to one field spell. Be gone. Did not trigger any fusions here. He did. Uh, actually, he sent Rhino Heart, so that's going to be pretty good. If he has a tear in the hand of discard, which he does with a scream. Did he not activate the Rhino? What's up with that, mate? We're going to be setting. Oh, okay, he's under Max C to be fair. So did not do that. I, I do agree with that because you're under Max C. Did not do that. Now we're activating Big Welcome on our very first turn. What is going on here? Turn one plays, spin back the clock, activate the Lovely, and we're gonna be summoning the Torby. Now Torby and Lovely, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be a Chaos Angel on the very first turn. Chandelier. Now it could be really risky to activate Lovely because you're popping, well you pop Hovness, they fuse, but they're under Max C. You pop a random card in the hand, maybe it's gonna be a tier limit, they can then fuse again. Torby gets summoning. And Lovely get poppin', taking out the Distrutto. Lovely set up a trap from the graveyard. On the very first turn here, we're making all these plays into Chaos Angel. There's a misconception with Labyrinth that it's just set back row pass. No, we're making plays on their turn, our turn, first turn, turn zero. This is the way. Muckraker, on the very first turn, we could then discard, resummon the Chaos Angel, banish another card in the field, or resummon the Lovely Labyrinth because she's going to be optimal for turning off the ability to use an Ash Blossom in response to any of our traps. Can't Ash, and we pop a card in the hand or in the field. We're going to be summoning our Ariana here. I know that he is playing Fusion, so I hope that I have my Dimensional Barrier in my deck here. As I then chain the big welcome to the Lady, can't Ash because I have Lovely, Lovely protecting you from that. So you can safely set this up. We do have Dimensional Barrier, and it's activatable. 
It's auto win. And we're gonna recycle it every turn. What can you do? There's nothing you could do. Lovely get poppin', Torby get summoning. I feel like I'm bullying this deck. This doesn't even seem fair. Ku Clock sent to the graveyard, so that dimensional barrier will be activatable. And let's see what we do here. We also have Terrors of the Overroot to send a card in the field to the graveyard. Add back, get summoning. Poppin' a driver. <laughs> what the hell is that? Not good. Fairy Tail Snow, I'm gonna be holding on to that dimensional barrier because maybe I wanna use it for Exceed instead. Maybe he tries to Zeus me. And we also have the Muckraker ability protecting any of my monsters from battle or effect destruction. Set to Strato face down, so it's not gonna be getting its effect here. We got Scream into Emergency Teleport going into the Punk Seaman. Searching for the Foxy Tune, discarding the Rhino, summoning, like what the heck is this? He's trying to trick me. He wants me to declare fusion, and you all think I'm gonna declare fusion because it's a tier limit deck. I'm not falling for it. No, I don't think so. He is going to be activating it. No, that's fine, because guess what? This is not negated by Dimensional Barrier. I could stop its summon, I can't stop its effect because Dimensional Barrier states the monster must be on the field to be negated. So once it leaves the field, it's not negated. Now I know what you're actually trying to do here. I'm calling Synchro. Synchros are illegal. Now he's pissed, because I was supposed to call Fusion, but I didn't. Come forth, Fairy Tail Snow, flip me down. Torby's gonna jump off the field. I don't know what you're doing, mate. We're gonna set from the deck, get ready. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> Calling Synchro against Tear to win the duel. Yes. This is the Labyrinth deck that I am currently playing. Otherwise, if you wanna see a deck type breakdown for Labyrinth that is on the tier list, something like this is gonna be good. And I am liking Solemn Strike to stop Ash Blossom because that's the main way the deck loses. Negate Ash, negate Ash, negate Ash. We don't care about Max C, we care about the Ash. So we either get Lovely out early to stop Ash, or we finger the Ash, we cross out the Ash, we strike the Ash, we win against Ash. We do not care. Maxi's great for eating Ash. Pot of E eats the Ash all day, and then you make your real play. 